chance to enjoy. I would like to first take this moment to just welcome our ASL interpreter, MJ. Looking good over there, man. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, so hopefully you guys out there have had a moment and you're either already visited the in-person gallery or scheduled to come by later on this afternoon. However, we just have a day of curation from this panel, the one later on. My name is Marcus Cook, and I have the pleasure of being your host for this illustrious panel on a thousand words, just telling the community stories about photography. Um, quick background about me. I am a creative architect and actually founder of Creators Coalition, a local community support group that builds on creatives and collaboration, as well as host the late night talk show titled Cook in the Late Night. And I have the pleasure of being your host for this conversation. So, so many great things to get into this panel as we're gonna be talking about just the power, the importance of storytelling and photography, right? Because I mean, we all take pictures, but you know, those pictures tell stories even when we don't give everyone the full details and caption. So we're gonna have amazing guests that are gonna be here, talk about their experiences behind the lens and where they really see things going in terms of our community. So. If you guys are ready, I am just as ready and excited to bring on some amazing guests. And don't forget, again, so many great things happening. This is being funded by Humanities DC and the DC Commission for the Arts, as well as there is a tech to give that will be at the bottom for you guys to donate out there today. So with that said, let me not be in the way any longer, all right? So let's, let's introduce our guests that we have coming out today. Um, first, we have Amani Washington, who is a street race <laughs> photographer as well as a cinematographer and a documentarian. So, I mean, this guy has the vision, has the views. Amani, please tell us a little bit more about yourself just to give the people a little bit of that. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Imani Washington. I just want to say I'm first and foremost honored to be on, on, the, on the panel uh, this afternoon. Um, this is this is this is awesome. Um, I am a photographer. I'm a filmmaker, videographer, and like I said, I'm just honored to be here to to talk um, and, and you know to just to discuss with you guys. Absolutely. And, and, and real quick, how long have you been in the photography game? I know we're going to get into some other questions, but just a little bit more about your, your backstory. Um, I've, I've been in photography since about 2014. And, um, you know, I remember uh, when I first got into it, I, I had my, my grandma's point and shoot camera and I, I, I would just mess around with that. Um, and, and I just enjoyed just taking pictures. And, you know, I eventually, you know, stepped up and got a, a digital camera. Um, and, and it was kind of all she wrote from there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love it, man. I love it. Look, this is this is this is the base of what we're going to need in this conversation. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking the time and being out here with us today. I'm excited. We got to bring on another another guest, though. We got we to gotta make sure the panel's full, right? Let's so please, we'd love to just take the time and welcome our other guest, Sharon Farmer. And when I tell you, everything about her is amazing, right? She went from being the, the White House photographer, the first African-American White House photographer, and then became the first female director of photography for the White House. And that is only a small shot, snapshot and a bigger story. Welcome to the stage, Sarah. How are you? I'm very good because this is a cool discussion. Because Absolutely. I started as a music major playing bassoon with a minor in piano and clarinet and went to photography. I play <laughs> bass, clarinet, bass, guitar, piano, and I love covering our culture. We are bad people. Every time you pick up your camera and you shoot, you speak, you shoot culture, you shoot families, you yeah. shoot scholars, you are adding to the trove of the continuum. This is a very good continuum. Because what it means, you got purpose. And when you have sure. purpose, your community gets stronger. Yes. Politicians sure. want to talk to you. <laughs> That's it. And, 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 you know, we can just like, just have a conversation, right? Because this is, this is just a community conversation we talk about this. But Sharon, I would love to even just talk about that part of it, just that ability to, to you know, Elevate your story and platforms. You talk about like getting attention to politicians. Like, talk about how even media can, can do that. How can photos bring that to life? You will be known by the company you keep. 
You are known by the spirit you hold. If you hang out with knuckleheads, you're not going to do so well. But if you hang out with folks that that something good has to be done every day, the time is not to be wasted. That's the folk you want to be with. So I hang out with people in the community who get stuff done. I hang out with dreamers who make their dreams come true. When you make your dream come true, you're on a next level going up, up and up. The only thing blocking outer space is not the glass ceiling, but not getting beyond the clouds in your way. And you can get rid of that clouds in your way by the company you keep and the spirit you hold and what you shoot. What makes your heart move visually when you look through your viewfinder? I look through mine, I'm looking through all four corners before I even center on what it is. Because if there's a tree behind somebody's head, ain't nothing going to save that photo, okay? Just to get to the space that you were, what led you to photography, Sharon? Like, I want to start with you. Like, what led you down this path? My mom, I grew up in Southeast and Benning Heights, and she sold a lot. And you could always tell the four farmers at any picnic because we all had the same material in our shirts. And you go, that's a farmer, that's a farmer. She took pictures. I didn't care about pictures. All I cared about was playing the piano. I'm playing Peter Gunn. I'm playing Shotgun by Junior Walker and the All-Stars. I'm throwing down on the Temptations. And then I started playing bassoon, which got me a partial scholarship to Ohio State. I'm a music major. Bassoon. I'm going to be a concert bassoonist. Then I found out how much you make when you get into one of them orchestras. I said, this will not do. Meanwhile, I'm making money on campus grilling hamburgers. I go to the darkroom one day with my boyfriend, and he's making pictures. And I'm like, whoa, alchemy. So the next chance I got, I took a science of photography class by Dr. Harry B. Now. I ain't look back. Then I started working for a black student paper called Our Choking Times. If you do the things you're interested in, you're on your path. If you don't do what you like, you're not going anywhere. You're not going to meet anybody because your enthusiasm level is going to be low. So do stuff that makes you enthusiastic. I like life. I know plenty of dead people, okay? I I, I, no, I love that sentiment. And I, I, I love just, again, the alchemy of it, you know, the, the pureness of pursuing just what, what, what fulfills you and allowing that to become your journey. And, and Imani, I know we talked a little bit about what got you on your path already, but you know, even in that sense, in that space of you know development and growth, what encouraged you in that journey as a photographer starting out? Yeah, um, I think for me, uh, you know, I initially fell in love with documenting. I fell in love um, with being able to capture moments, you know, that you, you can look back at and, and, and to know that some of those moments you probably can't get back, but just what you have and what you capture. And I just fell in love and I was fascinated with that and, and I developed a deep passion for it. And then, you know, um, I think another thing is just inspiration, you know, con- continuing to be inspired is another thing that keeps you that keeps you going. It keeps an artist, you know, pushing forward, you know, con- continue to seek inspiration is something that I'm big on. So, you know, I would say those things for sure. I, I, I love it. And, and, you know, I, I even love the space that we're in right now, right? Because even having this virtual meeting, the way that it's taking place, like technology is always evolving. There's always things happening. And so for you guys, like what have you noticed as far as the technology evolving community photography? Has it helped? Has it made it more difficult? Like where do you see it being? And we can start with you, Amani, if you don't mind. Um, okay. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, you know, I, I definitely think with technology, with the advancement of technology, as well as social media, I think it has, you know, it has made um, the com- photography community easier to connect with one another. Um, and, and, and I can use an example of Street Me DC. You know, I've been connected with Street Me DC since the beginning. Um, and, you know, I've seen how the community has grown substantially over the years. And, you know, I've seen people who've developed careers through photography. You know, just strictly from catapulting from from Free Me DC and a community um, of people that they have connected with, and, and people have developed careers through that. And so I was, I've been inspired from that, and I've seen, you know, you know, just exactly just how the uh, the community has advanced through technology, through social media, 
And so, yeah, I would definitely say it's easier. Sharon, what about you? What are your thoughts in that regard? I think this is just terrific. I'm a science fiction child. I grew up on comic books before even a Fantastic Four were conceived of. So to see technology come real, and I'm still alive. Oh, I'm living, okay? Because there's nothing more special than to listen to somebody's imagination. Octavia Butler's, Samuel Delaney was a badass too. Everybody who can imagine stuff that's not right here, right now, it's coming just because you imagine it. If you can shoot it, if you can shoot what's in your brain, you are on to the next level of photo life and living. Because every time you see something, you're going to think photo. You're going to think picture. And when you start doing that, no matter what, you may not carry the big camera with you, but carry the small camera with you. So you won't wake up 3 o'clock in the morning going, damn, I ain't have a camera. No, I do not count the iPhone as a camera. I like a little control focus maybe, you know? So. <laughs> no, I love, that's, that's funny. So, so that's interesting that you say like something like in comparison, like the iPhone to a, a camera. You know, we're as someone who, who has evolved with this technology and, and, and how it is, Two, let's let's start two parts with this. One, how, how how do you feel that in terms of social media, it's been able to portray photos and carry it? Like, you know, you, you mentioned not wanting to carry the iPhone everywhere, but that's typically a good way for people to share stuff a little bit more efficiently. Um, so what do you find yourself like viewing social media in that aspect of um, photos and the value of them? I don't so much show my photos on social media. I'm lucky enough that I have a wonderful bunch of friends and organizations I work with. They take my picture while I'm working. Okay? So and I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. And believe me, worldwide, all the black photographers I've met through the years, I've lost contact with nobody. If you make a good friendship, keep that friendship because friendships aren't the way our parents would like. And we have to have discriminating tastes about the company you keep and the spirits you hold. And I'm not running around no knuckleheads. It ain't happening. I hang out with positive people. We're going to get out of this mess. Yes, Black Lives Matter. And so does everybody else's life, but not at our expense. Culture in D.C. has kept Black Washingtonians safe. I mean, just think about it. We still don't have a Senate representative or a congressional person that can vote in that doggone Congress. If we ain't disrespected, disallowed, and stepped on, I don't know what SH, you know what I mean, is. So let's just yeah. put it the way it is. As an artist, being a photographer, you have to shoot the truth. Now, yeah. if you want to do fantasy and call this abstract, say that, do that, and give us yeah. something we should aspire to. That's something that's negative. Okay, that's all I ask. No, I, and I, I, I love that perspective. And I think even for you, because you, you said, you know, hey, you don't need a social media because you have friends that take your photos. I mean, you have you also have photos in the National African American Museum, like the Smithsonian. So, you know, your photos live in a, a, another medium and form than most, you know. So I can definitely understand that perspective. Uh, but Imani, more for yourself, like how do you see it in your point of view from the value of photos and, and social media time? Um, yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Um, especially, you know, for me who is on social media, I think, um, I guess the, the value of, of photos, I think has changed. You know, I think when we look at the uprise of social media, um, it has allowed um, more, I guess, photographic capabilities in phones now. And I think phones have, has, it's, it's kind of starting to become more at the forefront over cameras if we look at it um, in this era. And so um, I think that, you know, with that being said, um, from a photographer standpoint, a professional photographer who still values the camera um, and, and utilizing the skill set, it could be a little, you know, it could be a little frustrating at times, when, you know, with, 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 with people using phones. But I think at the same time, you know, when we're in an era of, you know, a higher demand for higher quality imagery, it also has provided more opportunity for photographers um, and, and more opportunity in, to, to pursue um, careers in photography. 
So I think it kind of goes, it kind of goes hand in hand, if you ask me. And, and and to add to this conversation, just to you know offer a little value, what it, what it's also done is it's it's inspired more people to take more photos. You know, like it's like back in the day when you had a Polaroid, like when you had it, it's like, oh, I need to take some pictures. I'm going to get these last four shots out, and I'm gonna go get it printed. Like it was a thing to take photos, and you know, I think that the idea of social media has now encouraged us to want to take pictures of a moment and share it with other people. And it's a little bit more instantaneously, hence Instagram, but you know, a little bit more instantaneously than previous times. So even for someone like myself, I'm not a, I'm not a photographer by any means, but I have an appreciation for what a shot could do because of social media and how, how important and powerful that is. So I think, I think you're right. I think we're all on this right path of just evolving it without forgetting the essence of the photo is what we really want to do. Um, so speaking of photos, you you both have seen various photos of U Street over the years. You know, what what has been, as far as these photos go, like what have you noticed in its evolution of what U Street looks like? Like how has that particular corridor evolved over the years in DC? was fine when they were messing with it. Now they've changed some of the historical nature and then try to try to rename sections of that town, uh, trying to make us forget what our history is for the real estate developers. I hang out with other photographers and especially my exposure group members. We're almost 40 years old now. When you hang out with people who understand the business and the art of photography, you begin to take on a social issue in your community because then you find out it ain't just happening to you. It's happening all across this town as they try to take D.C. back the way they like it to go. So it behooves us to keep taking pictures, keep publishing pictures, do the social issues, because all these years since the 1900s, these issues have not gone away. We had more culture, more restaurants in D.C. 1950 through 1968 when the riots happened. We had more and now we have less. And now because of the pandemic, we are losing more black businesses. We are losing more black places to hang. You better believe I died when they told me that Twins Jazz Club restaurant was closing. We in trouble. You have to preserve the culture by what you save and preserve. Take them pictures. I couldn't agree with you more, Imani. I'll let you feed in first. Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I think, you know, from my perspective, I couldn't even speak on, you know, um, the DC, DC funk parade and, you know, me being able to cover that over the last, uh, two years photography and, you know, with many other photographers who have covered, uh, the, the, you know, the parade and just, you know, seeing just the excellence of documentation through imagery, um, and, you know, just showing what DC funk parade holds on U street, this, you know, the elegance, um, the vibrance, you know, of just the community coming together um, through arts um, and music, you know. And so I, I, I've seen, you know, the evolution is definitely there. And, you know, I've, I've been able to see it at least for the last couple of years. Um, and even if we talk about, you know, early on from Black Broadway to now, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a huge advancement. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you two more. And I think, you know, um, a lot of what you're saying, too, is also, you know, reminding us of our history so case like to rebuild it you need a blueprint right like we don't want to have to start from scratch we don't want to have to go you know and say hey what what could be here when there's something that was there that we can we can you know re revitalize and bring back into the community and so i mean clear best segue i could ever make in my life just this idea of how important documentation is because photography is one thing but being like almost a documentarian like how important is that to just where we are as a community and society? Some words, and you can't say it didn't happen if you see an image of it. And for whatever fake photography they try to do, all that stuff gets found out. And the more you dig in fake stuff, the more fake and unreal you are. So we're not going to listen to that. We're going to keep on the good foot. We're going to document our communities the way we know them, even as they change because nothing's ever been the same, not even a snowflake, not even a water drop. And remember, if you see something and you ain't got a camera, 
You ain't sleeping that night. You, you know, that's very valid. I, I saw a double rainbow the other day and no one will believe me because I didn't take a picture of it. So, you know, it, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. But yeah, Amani, how about you? Like, especially as a, you know, documentarian, like something that you go after, what is, what's that opinion like for you? Um, I mean, yeah, I think, um, you know, docu documenting these historical spaces is, is, is very important. You know, like I said, when we look at even, you know, the, the history of U Street, you know, and Black Broadway, um, early on in the 1940s, 1960s, you know, we see in these images, um, we see in, we, we were educated, we're educated on, you know, what the history is. So I think documenting at that point and then moving on to now, you know, um, in, in 2020, you know, we, uh, it's a, it, we have an understanding that it's, it's very important to document these spaces to keep, you know, a timeline of, you know, how, you know, we are progressing as a community, you know? No, absolutely. And I think, I think even to what your point is like, you know, it, it it's the evidence of the moment, you know, right. like w without, without that ability, without that, that time frame to actually, you know, look at a, a moment. And, and again, it's, it's more than just a picture. It's more than just, Hey, go shoot this real quick and come back. It's literally looking around you and placing the scene for those who see it after you. And, you know, I mean, the, the biggest thought is like with where we are, how do we pivot back to kind of that Black Broadway era? How do we encourage the next generation of artists to get them in a space where they find themselves just inspired the same light and looking to make these same impacts? Money needs to go to music teachers and art teachers, theater teachers, people yeah. who do the culture because the culture needs push, it needs molding, it needs tending. Yeah. That creates the economics that run DC. We're not having dinner. We're not going to the clubs. We're not hanging out all night because of the pandemic. Yeah. Believe me, when we get back to living, we'll get our lives back. But until then, we got to stay safe because the secret path to all ruin is to go, oh, everything's okay. They said I was free. Oh, that state over there, I'm not free. Oh, they didn't tell me that. Oh, is that why you locking me up? We have to understand that all of our city council people and the mayor have to be continually lobbied about what the good things are that goes on with all these wonderful projects down U Street. The fun parade, the theaters, the dancing, the music that used to be way more. Now we got somebody complaining about go-go. They're in the wrong neighborhood. Move to the suburbs. We have to deal with the concept of what we can hold on to and how we make it grow. As we get older, see my gray hair? Believe me, I want to teach kids how to throw down the funk, play some jazz. It's important that we teach each other. No matter what, music gives us a sense of place. Pearl Bailey, Ethel, all the people up and down the East Coast on Amtrak bringing their culture up and down the Eastern seaboard, our parents enjoy, our grandparents enjoy. It ain't going on right now. So we have to hang out with each other and find that secret sauce that nobody knows about, like Mambo sauce, and talk about what it takes to stay together, even through science fiction on these Zoom things, okay? No, I, yes, absolutely. Amani, please, I, I can't follow that any better. Please, what's, 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 what's your perspective on this? Yeah, you know, to piggyback off of what Ms. Sharon is saying, I think, it, um, you know, I think I think ways that we, we can pivot back to Black Broadway is just, you know, continuing to, you know, have events like uh, DC Funk Parade, you know, and have these, these you know, photo galleries that, you know, exhibit the imagery of the history of Black Broadway, the history of U Street, to continue to educate our community, you know. And, you know, as Ms. Sharon was saying, you know, pushing with these music programs. And we look at what um, the music, the musicianship is doing um, and, you know, putting more money into these programs, you know, to help educate, you know, the younger generation, you know, you know, uh, uh, to come. So. No, I think I think that that that's the right way to look at it. Right. Because the goal is to make sure that this next generation understands that there are places they can go to be refueled, right? There's a place that you can, you can tap into others of the same like mind and like space. Because oftentimes when we find ourselves on creative paths, we typically get discouraged because we find ourselves to be alone. 
and se separated from everyone else. But as you mentioned, with programs like, I mean, the Funk Parade is an, a, a, an event or the musicianship is a program and just all these opportunities that are being created in the community, that is going to be the pivotal aspect in making sure that these next generations keep this energy going, right? And, and, and they're doing it. They are actively out here in this in this this social injustice time, taking pictures, trying to you know document what's happening. What sort of advice would you give this next generation that is are the are the 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 optics of just what tomorrow looks like? Can't take pictures if you don't have gear. If you don't have money, you're not gonna have gear. In order to get money, you have to protect your artistic rights, which means whatever the heck you're doing with your camera or your phone, copyright your images. You can get a whole lot done for $55. So the Library of Congress will say, you took this. Because otherwise, if you got a problem with somebody and go to court and you didn't copyright it, you out. Okay, that's the first thing. Number two, the business of photography. If you are not creative, if you do not keep meticulous records and make billing for the people you work for, if you sell an image, you want to be clear that you own the copyright and you sold an art object and you don't want folk reselling your stuff or copying your stuff. It's called plagiarism. That ain't cool. So also register with a place like Photo Shelter. Wherever that image travels to around the world, if you didn't get your royalty fee or your paycheck, they're going to let you know. Okay? The other thing, work keeps changing. It's very competitive. You have to take a picture of something every day, even if you don't want to, because that's how it works. Thank you. Yeah. Um... I think um, man, yeah, that was those are some good points. I would also say um, that you know just to for the next generation to continue to document, you know, to continue to utilize your skill set uh, to bring awareness to what's going on in this country. Um, you know, I, I think you know we we are in an era where um, you know media can be you know um, excluded sometimes, um, and, and I think we as have hold a responsibility as artists. Um, to bring awareness and to really, you know, tell what's, what's really happening in our community. Um, and, 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 you know, I think we hold that as a responsibility. So to the next generation, I would say, you know, continue to document, continue to utilize your skill set and your art to bring awareness to what's going on in this country. And, and I, I think to continue that thought process, um, be authentically yourself, like in your photos, like, you know, take pictures of things like you, like you were alluding to er earlier, um, Ms. Sharon, the, what you were saying as far as the idea of, you know, finding your passion, right? So take photos of things that you want to take photos of, then try new things, step out there and take a couple risks. Like, don't be afraid to take the shot is kind of the pun of it all. But, you know, essentially like, you know, you're, you're, you're right. A lot of people don't think of that, the business aspect of it. So I'm really glad you brought that to the table because I mean, even for, for, for my, my peer groups, it's like, Hey, take that picture and post it online. And it's, it's going at that point, it's fair game to anyone to do whatever they want to it. And then you see that photo on a magazine and you're wondering where, where's my check coming from? So I think that there needs to be a cognizant effort for new photographers just to be aware of the business. They don't necessarily have to be in the business, just aware of it to be able to better provide whatever opportunities that are coming up. So, you know, I mean, as, as far as just where you guys are in, in, in the spaces that you're in, I would like to ask, where do you see this just industry going in the, in the space of, of, of photography and, and interactions? Like, are we going to get more back to the more uh, non-digital ways and prints and good photos like that, or do we find more innovation coming? Like, what do you, what do you guys feel is happening in this space? Everything is fair game. You can make a pencil drawing, take a picture of it, and you got a photograph. This is the era where everything goes, and how well it turns out depends on what it looks like. 
and whether or not you can articulate it when somebody challenges you. What is that? Don't look like nothing. You have to have a good, succinct answer about what that is. That's what happens. I think it's fair game. You know, I think innovation is going to continue to happen. And, um, you know, people are going to continue to take pictures, whether from their phone, from their digital camera, medium format, film camera, you know, whatever. I think it's just innovation is going to continue to be pushed forward. And I think everything is fair game, just as Ms. Sharon said. <laughs> we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Hold on. They, they, it's a lot happening. All right. Sorry about that. So questions that are coming up. Um, where do you see us heading during these times with photography? Mm. More thoughtful times because there's a lot of things assaulting our common senses about decency, the American mm. way and dream, and the economic policies that are beginning to wreck our friends and neighbors and put holes in our communities as people have to now worry about breathing around somebody. Who would ever thought? So this is more adversarial issues. It is slavery in a lot of different ways that aren't good. The other deal is, even as an artiste, even Gordon Parks was political. Okay, Mary Church Terrell, one of the baddest young people back in the early 1900s, did not dig what some people were doing about black women not being able to vote. So she and the girls turned out a couple of places back in the day. If we had to go back to old school, such as life, because if you stand on the sidelines watching TV and you're not out there, if you're not out there voting or getting some souls to the polls, we about to go down and it's not going to be fun. Okay. And I would love to, cause you know, I think, I think of you, you mentioning that just reminds me of the importance of media, right? Because it, it, it was why a civil rights movement was able to be magnified during the time period because people saw the photos of it. They saw what was taking place in those movements. Like, you know, it, it, same, same with a, just a lot of current social injustice. It's because you have the, the digital, the media of it, that it makes you, it makes everyone else aware. Let me ask you guys this question that's like, what about those who aren't necessarily find themselves to be photographers, but documenting moments? Like, like you see a lot of things that come to life and surface and go social. Like, we are just regular civilians doing this. Like, what is your what is your perspective on that? Yeah, um, I think I think just you know the the aspect of photojournalism is like you know, is, is going to advance even more. I think, you know, like I said, people who don't necessarily have <clears throat> digital cameras, but they have their phone, especially when we look at, you know, obviously what's happening how happening in the country right now with just the, uh, with, with, um, the, the social injustice and police brutality. I mean, people are now bringing out their phones out more than ever, you know, in, in, in documenting in that aspect. And, you know, and that's an aspect of photojournalism because that's documenting moments that's happening. Um, in, 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 in history, really, right? Um, so I believe like the, just the aspect of photojournalism is, is really, you know, kind of advanced itself even more than that. And how about you, Ms. Farmer? Well, things have changed and businesses don't want to hire good people. And the only way you can get into the entry level to photojournalism now is to uh, work for community papers, and make sure your photo credit is adjacent to your name so you can begin to make a, a reputation. And you also have to keep your tear sheets. So you show people what you've done as they begin to figure out they want to hire you for the next job coming. The bottom line is every media company in this town has some kind of outlet here. The next deal is can you make the right deal for you that allows you to feel comfortable about how much they're paying you for usage of your image. You have to show a portfolio to say that you bought something. Whatever the client is you're dealing with, that's the way the portfolio needs to get geared. Only newspapers and magazines will see it all. But everybody else has a niche, and you have to figure out what that is and look at their stuff, as well as their mission, and figure out how you fit into that mission. Because people don't know you fit till you tell them. 
No, that's absolutely true. And I, I think, you know, just in keeping in mind what this conversation has been about, you know, I, I would love to even just focus on just the, the theme of this, the, the idea of storytelling, you know, and what are some stories that you yourself have been proud to tell of through your photos? How we don't take no stuff. I started taking demonstrations and disagreements when I was a college student at Ohio State. And we had a black student group called Afro and that stopped the jitney buses from running because they kept asking people to color for their passes and then ask white folk nothing. So that started me. Then I ran the black paper, Art Choking Times. And when I graduated from Ohio State, I had, was interning at the Associated Press. I didn't want to stay in the Midwest, didn't want to go further west, hell no. But I could still play the piano and play my bassoon. I came back to DC since they wouldn't send me. And I started working as a baby photographer. One thing leads to another. And I got tired of goo goo ga ga. Took a job at the camera store. <laughs> and then Sweet Honey in the Rock, you know, Sweet Honey in the Rock. <laughs> they were looking for a photographer for their second album cover. And I showed them my work. And the founder, Bernice Johnson Reagan, said, Why aren't you working for yourself? Light bulb goes off. Oh, man, the next year I get my bonus from District Photo. I have left the job on my way, taking all kind of photo jobs, no matter how little, how big, how small, as I try to survive photojournalism. And I finally got to the point, thanks to a wonderful photographer named Lee Mosley, couldn't work for the uh, Washington Post. She said, Sharon, I got to have mouth surgery. I'm going to be out for months. You should show them your portfolio. So I did. Next thing I know, I'm working. Next thing I know, the photo section is stealing me. Next thing I know, I'm working six to eight assignments a week because photographers get sick, don't feel like working. I ain't never felt like not working, okay? But, hey, it's a blessing because it allowed me to build up a portfolio. I knew Monday through Friday, I'm pretty much working for the Washington Post. Saturday and Sunday, I can run up to New York and be inspired and run back down. I started doing the New York, D.C. thing. I met more artists. I met more powerful women who understood staying in the mix. And it didn't matter if you were a poet, a singer, a visual artist. We were all culture. No, that's, I mean, I, I actually want to just have a little conversation about that. Like, just the, the culture of, of all the arts combining, right? Because, again, this is... Funk parade, funk parade. When you think of that, you think of the music, you think of the photos. You, you see all those things come together. Like, how important is it to establish whether it's just ecosystems of the arts again? Like bringing that feel back where it's multiple layers in it. Where do you find feel that to be something that? How do we get there currently? In the old days, it was easier because we had clubs we hung out at or restaurants like DC Space, or the Insect Club, Trav Insects as a Munch Crunch, okay? There are things we used to do that we're not doing now. We used to host each other for potlucks at each other's houses. All this pandemic stop has stopped us from clasping each other, telling each other we're gonna get better, what are we gonna do together? The conversations aren't happening. My generation is starting to pass away. So you know I'm not excited about that at all, okay? so. In order for your generation, you're going to be Zooming. You're going to be sending smoke signals on the back porch, telling them to come together on what corner, what time, and wear your mask. We have to come up with innovative ways to want to be together. If we do no more than have impromptu jam sessions on a corner, you bring the keyboard, you bring the drums, you bring the mic so we can do the poetry throwdown. We have to interact like our fathers and grandfathers did doing the duas on the corner because your neighborhood loves creativity. But if you're not presenting it, they don't know. You don't know how much your love is a griot among your own if you don't present yourself with a small group of buddies, try to be a little regular about it once a week at some hour that fits for everybody. Start doing it. The drum thing that goes on up at Malcolm X Park every Sunday is not stopped. What has happened? They stand further away from each other. But you have to be committed to the idea that unless we're together, we're not going to be okay. 
and I'm committed that only reason I'm okay is because I stay home right now because of issues about this daggone virus. Now, a revolutionary doesn't want to stay home, so what do you do? You do your wood shedding in your music room. We ain't got no dining room. We got music room. And you figure out how to communicate another way. Then you call one of your buddies up and go, what do you think it is? Now, because of Zoom, we can really try to start playing together. This is wonderful bass player named David Marsh. He has managed to make the Zoom videos a way of life on YouTube. If a musician, one guy can do that, you know what all of us can do? No, I, I, I love that direction. Amani, what's some of your ideas, man? Like, how, how do you see this elevating this idea for these art ecosystem? Yeah, I think um, piggybacking off of what Ms. Sharon is saying, you know, we, we need to continue the conversations. We need to have the conversations. Um, I think in particular with the younger generation, uh, we need to educate ourselves. Um, on the history of art and you know so we can we can have these conversations if we don't understand the history how can we advance you know how can we advance the art right um and i think you know developing in, in innovative ways to you know obviously we're in a pandemic but you know having more uh zoom conversations um and and, and and bridging the gap between other art forms whether it's not just photography but you know painting music you know uh, abstract art you know bring it bridging those gaps and, and really bringing a collective uh, together. The, this was a conversation that was absolutely needed. I just want to say thank you, Ms. Sharon. Thank you, Imani. Thank you, MJ. Like, thank you, everyone, for just being a part of this, because I, I, I see that it's something that we need to have more conversations like this. And hopefully someone tuned in out there has had an opportunity to be inspired, informed, or at least at least a little motivated and educated, right? You know, the, the bare minimum. The bare minimum. But with that said, again, thank you both for your time. Um, a, a little bit more just um, about the Funk Parade and Photo Gallery. Hopefully you guys, if you guys have not online, you've seen that you can register to come and see the in-person gallery. Come see these historic photos that we were talking about. Come see the streets that we were talking about and come see the energy of what the Funk Parade has been and what we continue to hope to bring back. Uh, before we go, I uh, definitely want to get get in closing. Um, and again, real quick, how does how can we follow you two or see your two work, uh, Ms. Sharon? Real quick, and then Amani. For me, you can just Google up my name and say photographer. All kind of stuff come up in Google or Firefox. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I'm just like chilling. <laughs> I'm thinking about all the crazy stuff, how to get the vote out. I signed up some for some. Will you do messaging? Will you call people? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm political right now because the stuff it. and the madness is not going to be helped by just cultural arts. It needs to be helped by action that says we get what's going on. Our parents were so right. <gasps> oh. So fight the power. Fight the power. <laughs> awesome. And Amani, we're going to follow you real quick. Well, well, first of all, Miss Sharon said, "Google me." I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get on that. I'm trying to get on that level. You know what I mean? Just Google my name, and, and then we get. You know, um, but um, you could you could um, people can follow me on Instagram at okmani. That's O K M A N I. Um, you could check out my work on my website as well, okmani.co. Um, and and yeah, awesome. So to to everyone out there again, thank you for joining us. Oh. Join exposure group. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for joining us. And it's a thousand words telling the community story. Uh, again, my name is Cook. And if you want, you can follow me at a guy named Cook on all social media platforms. But also, don't forget to follow the Funk Parade at DC Funk Parade. Please check us out on social media. Sign up for our newsletter at funk, thefunkparade.com. We have all these opportunities for you. So that is funkparade.com to sign up for the newsletters. And stay tuned. And we're going to have another amazing conversation coming to you guys at 5 o'clock for a View Street Could Talk. So thank you guys for tuning in. And I hope you guys have an amazing day. Take care.